Hello, uh, welcome to today's webinar on the theme Research Innovation and Ranking, organized as part of the theme-based webinar series on the completion of one year of transformative reforms under National Education Policy 2020. This event is organized by Don Bosco College of Engineering and Technology, Guwahati, Assam. Here is the agenda for today's webinar. We will first talk about why research and innovation is important. Then we will look at the current state of affairs of research and innovation in, in India. Then we will look, we'll discuss how NEP 2020 plans to energize research and innovation. And finally, we will look at the total ranking of institutions on innovation achievements. I'll first like to start by differentiating these terms, research, innovation, and creativity. And in the words of Dr. Geoff Nicholson, uh, research is transformation of money into knowledge, whereas innovation is transformation of knowledge into money. Uh, creativity is about finding solutions to problems, so it's about thinking. And innovation is about converting those solutions into product or services that have market value. So now why research and innovation is important? Research and innovation is important to create new knowledge uh, for the development of an enlightened knowledge society. It is important to address key societal challenges such as providing access to citizens, clean drinking water and sanitation, quality health care and education, air quality, improved transportation, energy and infrastructure. Research and innovation is important to grow and sustain a large and vibrant economy. It is important to improve the teaching and learning processes at high education institutes. Uh, from history it can be seen that the best uh, teaching and learning institutes are those that are involved in high quality knowledge creation. Research and innovation is important to meet the challenges posed by rapid changes occurring in the world such as climate change, population dynamics and management, biotechnology, expanding digital marketplace, rise of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Research and innovation is also important to achieve the potential of the nation's vast talent pool. As can be seen, uh, only less than 1% of the, high of the 40,000 high education institutes that are in India are engaged in research. Uh, this means that um, this means the huge loss of India's um, research potential. So, in short, uh, research and innovation is vital for economic, intellectual, societal, environmental, and technological health and progress of a nation. Uh, we know the importance of research and innovation, but if we look at the state of affairs of research and innovation in India, it can be seen that only 0.65% of the GDP is invested in research and innovation, compared to 4.9% in Israel, 4.6% in South Korea, 3.1% in USA, and 2.2% in China. The less investment in research and innovation translates to less number of person involved in research in India. And as can be seen from the data, only 15% out of 1 lakh population is involved in research in India compared to 825 in Israel, 423 in USA, and 111 in China. If we look at 
the number of publications coming out of India. India contributes only 4.8% uh, of the total scientific publications compared to 17.8% of USA and 18.6% of China. Uh, talking about the quality of research, only 15.8% of the total publications from India are in the top 10 journals compared to 36.2% of USA and 27.6% of China. If we look at the international patent applications, India in spite of having the second largest uh, population files only 2000 international patent applications compared to close to 69,000 of China, 60,000 of USA and 50,000 of Japan. India do not appear in the top 10 countries that file international patent applications. If we look at patent filing within India, China and USA, uh, in 2019, 53,000 patents were filed in India compared to close to 14 lakh in China and 6 lakh in USA. Out of those 53,000 patents filed in India, only close to 20,000 are from are from uh, person resident in India while the remaining 34,000 are from non-resident Indians. It's not that uh, researchers in India are not capable of filing patent, it's just that the awareness of intellectual property rights uh, in India is not up to the mark. People are not aware of the need to file patents. Uh, other challenges in the present R&D ecosystem are emphasis on teaching above research. After independence, research in India was restricted to only few premier institutes whereas the other universities were mostly involved in teaching. This led to fund being sent only to those premier institutes, uh, whereas there was lack of fund in the other universities, resulting in poor infrastructure and limited funding in those institutes which are only involved in teaching. There is a lack of integrated planning and coordination. There are many funding agencies in India such as DST, uh, DAE, DBT, ICAR and many other uh, funding agencies are there who is funding research in India. However, there is no coordination among these different agencies which sometimes lead to duplication of research and effort. Uh, there is lack of emphasis on creativity and critical thinking in the educational institutions. There is lack of research culture. There is discouragement of interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research. And research in India primarily hinges on doctoral research work. Other problems in the present higher education system are a severely fragmented higher education ecosystem, less emphasis on the development of cognitive skill and learning outcomes, a rigid separation of disciplines with early specialization and streaming of students into narrow areas of study, limited access particularly in socio-economically disadvantaged areas, lesser emphasis on research at most universities and colleges, complex regulatory system, 
large affiliating universities resulting in low standards of undergraduate education. It is against this backdrop that the National Education Policy 2020 was approved by the Union Cabinet of India on 29th July 2020. NEP 2020 replaces the previous National Education Policy 1986. This policy outlines the vision of India's new education system and the policy aims to transform India's education system by 2040. The policy proposes a new structure for school education. The previous academic structure consisted of a 10 plus 2 structure. So there were no specific guidelines for educating the children uh, in the age group 3 to 6. However, it has been seen that 80% of 85% of the cumulative brain development of a children happens before the age of 6. Hence, uh, due to the lack of any specific guidelines, a majority of children in these age groups was uh, were not able to have quality education. Now, in NEP 2020, uh, the structure has been changed to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 where uh, an NEP 2020 envisions that um, there would be specific guidelines for educating even children in the age group 3 to 6. NEP 2020 proposes new structure for the undergraduate degree. The undergraduate degree will be of either three or four year duration with multiple exit options. Students may exit the program after completing one year with a certificate or may exit after two years of study with a diploma. Students may exit after three year program with a bachelor's degree or students may exit after four years with a multidisciplinary bachelor's program. The four-year program may also lead to a degree with research. The new structure for master's degree uh, is as follows. There could be a one-year master programs for those who have completed a four-year bachelor's program with research. There could be a two-year master's program for those who have completed a three-year bachelor's program. Uh, there may be an integrated five-year bachelor's master's program and undertaking a PhD shall require either a master's degree or a four-year bachelor degree with research. NEP 2020 uh, envisions that high education institutes will focus on research and innovation by setting up startup incubation centers, technology development centers, centers in frontier areas of research, and greater industry academia linkages. NEP 2020 envisions the establishment of a national research foundation uh, to catalyze research and innovation in India. The objectives of NRF are to fund competitive peer-reviewed grant proposals for all types and across all disciplines, uh, to seed, grow and facilitate research at academic institutions, to fund research infrastructure at individual institutions, act as a liaison between researchers and relevant branches of government and industry, recognize outstanding research and progress, increase India's role and participation in key areas of national and global importance through large-scale scale mission projects and mega-projects. To create a central clearinghouse for collection, interpretation and analysis of information and data 
surrounding all research being conducted in the country and to serve as a high-level think tank for the coordination and planning of research in the country. There, the NRF will consist of 10 major directorates which are Natural Sciences, Mathematical Sciences, Engineering, Environmental and Art Sciences, Social Sciences, Arts and Humanities, Indian Languages and Knowledge Systems, Health, Agriculture, Innovation and Entrepreneurship. In the budget 2021, uh, 50,000 crore rupees has been earmarked over five years for National Research Foundation. So, NRF plans to establish linkages across academia, government and industry. Uh, what has been happening so far is that there was no clear link between the researchers and the policy makers in government agencies. Uh, because of this missing link, uh, researchers were not, may not be solving uh, problems uh, that uh, they are not solving uh, problems that are important to the society or the nation. And it may happen also that uh, some solutions found by the researchers uh, may not be known to the policy makers uh, which otherwise could have been used to solve uh, which, which could have been used for social good so now with NRF uh, NRF plans to be the linkage between uh, the researchers and the policy makers to ensure that the most urgent national issues of the day are well studied by the researchers and the latest research breakthroughs are implemented for public good through policy. NRF will seed fund at state universities through NRF professorships. Uh, this scheme is mainly for universities and colleges where research is currently non-existent or in nascent stages. As per this scheme, um, faculty uh, serving or retired faculty from premier institutes would be selected to mentor and develop research uh, at such universities and colleges where research is currently non-existent. Uh, NRF will aim to fund 100 prestigious NRF professorships. Uh, the NRF professors will launch new high-quality research cell uh, at, at those institutes. Uh, as per the NRF detailed project report draft copy, uh, this is the outlay of fund for the NRF professorship scheme. So 4,220 crore rupees has been allocated uh, over five years. The table also shows the average stipend for each NRF professor. NRF plans to establish 20 centers of excellence along with the associated research funding uh, with an average cost of 300 crore for each center of excellence, a total outlay of rupees 6,000 crore has been allocated. The center of excellence will be set up in areas that are critical for the nation, uh, such as machine learning, environmental science, preservation of Indian languages, museum, museum administration, etc. NRF will also fund two nationwide multi-institution national mission projects. National mission projects would be projects such as uh, 
cleaning uh, the rivers of India, uh, eradicating malaria, uh, etc. Uh, in addition to national mission projects, India will continue participate in international mega projects such as the Large Hadron Collider, the Laser Inferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, and the Square Kilometer Array projects. Uh, the total cost is expected to be about 10,000 crore over five years for this scheme. NRF will select and fund 1,000 doctoral and 1,000 post-doctoral fellowship every year. And here is the allocation of fund for doctoral fellowship. A total of 1,780 crore rupees has been allocated. A table also shows the stipend for each fellowship. Uh, the table here shows the fund allocated for post-doctoral fellowship. A total of 1,686 crore has been allocated over five years. Uh, NRF will fund research projects. Uh, Every year, 320 high-quality three-year projects uh, per directorate will be selected. And since we have 10 directorates, so in any given year, uh, there will be 3,200 active projects. Rupees 26,720 crore has been earmarked for this purpose. Uh, the Ministry of Education has formally recognize artificial intelligence as a disruptive technology and considering its importance NRF will initiate or expand research efforts in AI by advancing core AI research development and deployment of application based research advancing international research efforts to address global challenges in areas such as healthcare, agriculture, and climate change using AI. Um, NEP other approaches to energize research programs that are mentioned in NEP 2020 are uh, a more play and discovery based style of learning in schools, emphasis on scientific method and critical thinking, career counseling in schools toward identifying student interests and talents, promoting research in universities, multidisciplinary nature of all high education institutes, and emphasis on holistic education, inclusion of research and internships in the undergraduate curriculum, faculty career management systems that give due weightage to research, governance and regulatory changes that encourage an envir environment of research and innovation. Now, talk now talk about the ranking of institutes. Uh, there are no framework mentioned in NEP 2020 as such, but the Ministry of Education has been using the Atal ranking of institution on innovation achievements to rank the different institutes on innovation parameters. So ARIA is an initiative of Ministry of Education Government of India and it ranks all high education institutes in India on innovation related indicators. The objectives of ARIA is are setting direction for high education institutes towards streamlining and establishing a strong startup ecosystem in the campus and region measuring innovation and startup ecosystem based on input, process, output, and outcome-based parameters, focusing on both quantity and more on quality aspects of startup ecosystem available at institute, to measure the impact created by these innovations and startups from higher education institutions in society and market, and it aims to uplift India's position in the Global Innovation Index from 48 to top 20 in a time period of five years. Uh, the parameters used to rank the institutes 
in ARIA 2021 framework are as follows. There were nine parameters that were used. The first parameter being developing an innovative and entrepreneurial mindset through series of activities. Parameter two, teaching and learning, uh, academic programs related to innovation and entrepreneurship and IPR offered by the Higher Education Institute. Parameter three is dedicated infrastructure and facilities to promote innovation and entrepreneurship at High Education Institute. Parameter four is generation of innovations, ideas with support of High Education Institute and recognition received. Parameter five is ventures established with the support of the Higher Education Institute and recognitions received. Parameter six had two parts. The first part being angel and VC fund investment mobilized to support innovation and startups incubated at the Higher Education Institute. And the second part of parameter six is promotion of collaboration for co-creation of innovation and entrepreneurship initiatives. Parameter seven was intellectual property generation and commercialization. Parameter 8 again has been divided into two parts. The first part being annual budget on promoting and supporting innovation and entrepreneurial activities, total expense towards INE and IPR support activities. And the second part of parameter number 8 is total revenue generated by Higher Education Institute from incubation services to startups and commercialization of IP and innovations. The ninth parameter was participation of higher education institutes in I and E initiative of Ministry of Education. Each of these parameters had again many other sub parameters such as how many activities were conducted uh, related to I and E in the institute, how many INE activities that the institute participated on, how many faculty underwent entrepreneurship development program or faculty development program related to INE and many other such sub parameters were there. The complete list of sub parameters can be obtained uh, from this framework which is available at the given link. Uh, regarding the ARIA 2020 results, uh, we should be proud as our institute, Asim Don Bosco University, was placed in band B, which means we had a rank between 26 and 50 in the category University M deemed to be University Private Self-Financed. The results are available at the given link and as can be seen from this document. Uh, Assam Don Bosco University is the only private university from North Northeast that finds a mention in this document. The other universities or institutes from Northeast being Indian Institute of Technology Guwahati, National Institute of Technology or National Pradesh and National Institute of Technology Silchar. Uh, this is all that I have for today's webinar. Uh, thank you for listening and bye.